Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we were discussing projective spaces. Okay. So, uh, so if you recall, uh, we have uh, we have projective space, projective n space over k, which is uh, where k is of course an algebraically closed field, and this is of course this uh, thought of as a space of lines in in n plus one dimensional affine space. All right, and we have given uh, the Sarisky topology on this, okay, and in fact, um, if you remember, uh, the uh, so this, so there was a, a very nice picture, uh, one giving the geometric side and the the other the algebraic side. So for the algebraic side, so this is the geometric side, and this is the algebraic side. So this is a picture very similar to the case, uh, to the affine case. So on the algebraic side, you take the so-called homogeneous coordinate ring of uh, this projective n space, which is defined to be the uh, ring of polynomials in n plus one variables, and it is uh, customary to start the indexing of the variables uh, with from zero. Okay. And uh, of course, you have n plus one variables, and this is the affine coordinate ring of the projective space above uh, of the affine space above. Okay, so this this projective space is, after all, uh, affine space. Uh, the n plus one dimensional affine space punctured at the origin uh, modulo uh, the equivalence, which identifies all the points uh, passing through uh, on a line passing through the origin. Okay, all the points. On a line passing through the origin uh, in n plus one dimension affine space are identified as a single equivalence class. Okay, and uh, therefore, in other words, an equivalence class is just a line passing through the origin, and therefore, this is a space of lines uh, in affine n plus one space. Okay, and uh, this is the homogeneous coordinate ring, which is the uh, which is also the affine coordinate ring of the affine space above. All right. And what you do is that, of course, the 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 important structure here is that uh, we are interested in the so-called graded structure of this ring. Uh, the this ring. Uh, so let me write it as S. This S is a graded ring in the sense that S is uh, the direct sum of its degree d pieces for d greater than or equal to zero. Okay, where uh, S d uh, corresponds to homogeneous polynomials of degree d. S zero is of course uh, is going to be uh, just k, k the constants, okay, which are homogeneous polynomials of degree zero, and uh, uh, it is this so-called graded structure which is very very important. And in fact, uh, uh, what we do is that the Zariski topology uh, 
uh, is, is defined like this on the on the projective space you start with i in s a homogeneous ideal a homogeneous ideal uh, namely i the condition for homogeneity is that if you take uh, the, the ideal i should be the same as uh, uh, it should be the same as the direct sum of all its pieces uh, intersected with sd so uh, you take the ideal i and intersect with sd what you will get is all those uh, elements in the ideal which are homogeneous of degree d and of course if you take a direct if you take the sum it will of course be a direct sum because this is already a direct sum okay and this will certainly be a subset of this always for any ideal but then the condition that the ideal should be homogeneous is that this is exactly equal to this okay which is the same as saying that given any polynomial uh, given any element here uh, each of its homogeneous components is also back in this ideal okay that is what it means and uh, 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 and you know we we saw this as a geometric condition for a for a polynomial to vanish on a line uh, it is necessary uh, a line passing through the origin it is necessary that the polynomial uh, has uh, no degrees uh, has no constant term uh, that is its constant term is 0 and every every uh, degree d piece every homogeneous piece of the polynomial should also vanish on that line okay and that is exactly the this homogeneity condition okay. Uh, so once you have a homogeneous ideal then you can uh, define the 0 set of uh, this ideal in the projective space uh, which is the set of all uh, uh, points here which are common zeros of uh, all the polynomials here okay and uh, of course it is the homogeneity of the polynomial uh, uh, which allows you to decide for sure that the polynomial vanishes uh, at a point on the projective space it is a because it is a homogeneity of a polynomial which tells you that if it vanishes on a line passing through the origin then it will vanish at every point on that line okay and uh, so uh, we get this and these are the uh, these are the so called closed uh, these are the closed uh, or algebraic uh, subsets the the, the in, in projective space and this gives the projective space is a risky topology uh, a topology which is called the risky topology the proof that this is a topology is very uh, is very similar to the affine case okay uh, you can check it uh, and of course you have to remember that the property of an ideal the, the, the property of homogeneity of an ideal behaves well under some uh, product intersection and taking radicals okay namely a sum of homogeneous ideals is homogeneous a product of homogeneous ideals is homogeneous uh, uh, an intersection of homogeneous ideals is also homogeneous the radical of a homogeneous ideal is also homogeneous okay these are all simple facts that you can check and moreover uh, you can also check that uh, 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 to check that a uh, uh, homogeneous ideal is prime you can check the primeness condition only for homogeneous uh, products okay so to in general if you want to check a ideal is prime you take a product uh, in the in the ideal and show that one of the factors of the product is also in the ideal but then you can restrict this checking only to homogeneous elements if you want to check a homogeneous uh, ideal is prime okay. So, uh, to, uh, so uh, the fact is that as in the affine case you get a very nice picture uh, you get uh, uh, you have an arrow going in this direction and uh, uh, well there is also an arrow that is going in this direction. Uh, so, this is the this is the z this is the i and this is uh, give me any subset y. Uh, of uh, projective space then I have i of y uh, this is the set of all so you take the set all those homogeneous polynomials which uh, vanish on y and then you take the ideal generated by that. So this is the uh, 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 ideal so this is well so this is the ideal generated uh, generated by all homogeneous uh, polynomials vanishing on y okay. So uh, and I also told you uh, if you recall in the last lecture that uh, yet another way of saying that an ideal is homogeneous is by saying that it is generated by homogeneous elements okay. So since this ideal is generated by 
homogeneous polynomials which are of course homogeneous elements uh, it is obvious that this ideal is a homogeneous ideal. So you get a you get a kind of uh, you know uh, mappings back and forth in this side on this side you can have uh, 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 you know closed subsets uh, or algebraic subsets of projective space and on uh, on on this side you can have uh, homogeneous ideals and you have mappings going in this direction and the reverse direction but then if you want to make this into bijective correspondence you will have to restrict uh, of course uh, 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 well in fact uh, on this side I can take all subsets okay uh, but and here I can take all subsets and here I can take all ideals but of course the point is I cannot take all ideals here I have to take only homogeneous ideals okay but then this map always gives me something close to here okay because because that is how the risky topology is defined whereas uh, if you give me any subset this always gives me a homogeneous ideal okay. So if you want a uh, if you want a bijective correspondence what you will have to do is that just li like in like the affine case you will have to restrict here to uh, you know you have to restrict here to radical ideals okay and on this side you will have to restrict to uh, closed subsets and then you have a bijective correspondence okay and uh, uh, as before this is uh, as in the affine case this is an inclusion reversing uh, bijective correspondence between radical homogeneous ideals on this side and uh, uh, closed subsets here the only thing you have to remember is that you should take homogeneous radical ideals that is the first point the second point is you will have to leave out one particular ideal and that is the uh, so called irrelevant maximal ideal that is the actually the maximal ideal that corresponds to the 0 in the affine space above of which uh, which has been thrown out uh, when we considered the uh, projective space okay. So uh, this is a fact that uh, uh, I told you last time and of course we have nice things like uh, 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 we have the we have statements like uh, uh, so let me so let me say that just repeat it here you have closed uh, subsets on this side and uh, uh, you have a bijective correspondence Uh, on on this side you take homogeneous radical ideals uh, different from the irrelevant maximal ideal which is usually written as s plus it is written as s plus because it is the sum of all the it is the direct sum of all the sds for d positive okay. If if you take s1 plus s1 direct sum s2 direct sum and so on what you will get is exactly the ideal generated by all the variables so it is written as s plus okay and uh, uh, this is called the irrelevant maximal ideal okay. So you have this bijective correspondence and then of course as you we have these facts like uh, i of <coughs> e z of i uh, is rad i and you have uh, uh, e z of i of y is y bar okay these are all facts that uh, we have in the affine case we have the uh, and of course uh, in one direction this is trivial the other direction is the so called projective null stellar and such okay and uh, so you have a projective version of the null stellar and such and you have these two facts and uh, you also have uh, as in the projective as in the affine case uh, uh, you also have this fact that uh, if you take if you take uh, if you take prime ideals homogeneous prime ideals uh, that is a subset of this uh, because the prime ideal is always radical. Uh, so if you take the subset of homogeneous prime ideals that will that under this correspondence will go to what are called as uh, uh, projective varieties. Uh, these will be irreducible algebraic sets in projective space. So on this side, side I will get projective uh, sub variety here, and by projective sub varieties I mean uh, closed or algebraic subsets of projective space, which are irreducible. So, in other words, what I'm saying is just like in the affine case, uh, uh, a subset here is a closed subset here is irreducible. Uh, uh, if I do not leave its ideal is prime okay and uh, uh, 
So, these are all things that we have just as in the affine case and now what we do is that so, so we define so we we uh, uh, so the uh, uh, so what we do is that we we enlarge uh, enlarge uh, the the uh, uh, notion of variety uh, to include so so far uh, our varieties were either affine uh, or quasi affine so affine meant that uh, you you are looking at an irreducible closed subset of some affine space and quasi affine means you are looking at uh, an open subset non empty open subset of uh, an irreducible closed subset of affine space so uh, so this is x irreducible closed in in some affine space and uh, quasi affine meant uh, something that is an open subset of such an x uh, that is an open subset of an affine. So, you can think of it as u uh, sitting inside x uh, this is non empty open subset of x which is an irreducible closed subset of some affine space ok. So, this is this is what is meant by quasi affine variety. So, we have already dealt with the uh, these two. Now, you extend the definition to include uh, projective varieties and quasi projective varieties. So, uh, what are proje so projective varieties are similarly uh, irreducible closed subsets in projective space. So, it is some x which is irreducible closed inside projective space uh, and uh, of course, you can again define quasi projective varieties and quasi projective varieties are open subsets of projective varieties. So, quasi projective these are open subsets of projective varieties. So, they will look like <coughs> an open subset open non empty uh, inside x which is irreducible <coughs> closed inside some projective space. So, now uh, variety means any one of the following four possibilities. So, it is either a it is a uh, uh, it is either an irreducible closed subset or an open subset of that in a fine space or in projective space ok. Now, uh, so you we enlarge the notion of what a variety is and then you have to note that uh, um, uh, talking about irreducibility you have to note that uh, projective space is also no ethereum. Uh, uh, so, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, I just wanted to remind you that uh, projective space is just the uh, quotient of the punctured affine space uh, and uh, of course, you know uh, if you take uh, uh, and the punctured affine space is uh, no ethereum. So, the projective space is no ethereum uh, for example, uh, how do you verify that the space is no ethereum you show that it, it satisfies the DCC the descending chain condition for closed sets. So, if you give me a descending chain of closed subsets in projective space you simply pull it up by the projection map to the affine the punctured affine space above and then you add the origin ok. So, that you will get a descending close uh, sequence of subsets in affine space, but then you know that the affine space is uh, no ethereum therefore, that sequence uh, uh, stabilizes and therefore, its image below uh, will, will also stabilize ok. Of course, you will have to remove uh, when you take the image below you will have to remove the origin and then uh, take the image under the projection from the punctured affine space to the projective space. So, it is obvious uh, uh, that uh, the projective space is going to be no ethereum ok and uh, and then you know the moment you have a no ethereum topological space then then every closed subset has a no ethereum decomposition namely a decomposition into a unique decomposition into irreducible finitely many irreducible closed subsets. Uh, the decomposition being unique except of for a permutation of the uh, uh, elements occurring, uh, occurring in the decomposition except uh, provided you assume that uh, uh, there is no redundancy in your decomposition namely no no irreducible uh, closed subset in the decomposition is a subset of some other irreducible closed set 
in that decomposition and therefore uh, and such such sets reducibly closed subsets the finitely many reducibly closed subsets uh, the union of which uh, in a unique sense is the given closed subset of projective space uh, they are called the irreducible components okay uh, so this is just uh, so you have no ethereumness of projective space you have uh, irreducible decompose uh, you have the noetherian decomposition for any closed subset okay that is because of the noetherian property and then you will also have this fact that uh, uh, topologically you know that uh, uh, any noetherian space uh, is quasi compact therefore uh, you will get that projective space any uh, uh, any uh, uh, projective space is of course quasi, quasi compact and uh, and in fact uh, direct demonstration of that is that we have seen that a projective space is actually a union of n plus 1 affine spaces okay so there is already a finite cover by affine spaces so pn uh, has a union uh, pn is the union of finitely many ans n plus 1 ans okay so uh, so but in fact any close sub any subset of pn uh, uh, being a subset of a noetherian topological space will be noetherian and you know uh, uh, it and since the noetherian topological space is always quasi compact any subset will be quasi compact okay uh, so uh, well now uh, so these are all uh, uh, nice things that are going on here so so in particular you must remember that if you take an open subset if you take a quasi projective variety then that is both irreducible and dense in its closure which will be a projective variety just like if you take a quasi affine variety it will be both irreducible and dense in its closure which will be a uh, uh, which will be an affine variety okay so <coughs> um so this is the situation now what i we wanted to do is uh, i've enlarged the uh, uh, the objects in the category of varieties like this okay uh, I also want to enlarge uh, uh, so I am I am thinking of the category of varieties which means I am thinking of both I have to think of both objects and morphisms okay the objects of course I have enlarged because I have added projective and quasi projective varieties but then I have to enlarge uh, the definition of morphism and uh, to and you know the definition of morphism the affine or quasi affine case is that it it is a continuous map that pulls back regular functions to regular functions therefore if I want to enlarge uh, if I want to define morphisms which involved even projective or quasi projective varieties I have to tell you what is what are meant by regular functions for projective or quasi projective varieties okay and the answer is very very simple just like the affine case where a regular function is just a quotient of polynomials locally in the projective case you only require that it is a quotient of homogeneous polynomials of the same degree and you put the same homogeneous degree so that you get a valid function okay. So, uh, so let me say that uh, so you know so suppose you are you are suppose you are having a subset s in projective space okay and you take uh, f and g in uh, 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 d in s super h this is the union of all the sds d greater than uh, uh, d greater than equal to 0 okay uh, let me um, uh, all right so so let me take d greater than or equal to 1 okay let me not take uh, t let me not let me not take uh, non zero constants okay so you take two so i'm taking two homogeneous polynomials of course you know i cannot evaluate a polynomial on uh, even if it is homogeneous i cannot evaluate a polynomial at a point of projective space uh, the only the homogeneity of the polynomial will only tell me that it is uh, what I can uniquely always say is whether the polynomial will vanish at that point of projective space or not but I cannot give I, but if it does not vanish it cannot give you a particular value okay that is because uh, if I plug in a, a point from projective space here then uh, you know there is a common uh, multiple which is floating around because uh, the the points in projective space are common ratios they that is why they are called homogeneous coordinates and that whatever uh, constant multiple can always be pulled out uh, of the evaluation uh, and it will come out with a power which is equal to the degree of the homogeneity of the polynomial. So uh, but the point is that 
if uh, degree of the homogeneous degree of f is equal to the homogeneous degree of g then uh, you know uh, uh, okay so uh, maybe there is no harm in including 0 also uh, because anyway constant functions will make sense. So if uh, so so if both of them have the same degree then you know f by g uh, 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 makes sense uh, as a function into uh, k uh, uh, in s yes, intersection uh, the complement of uh, uh, z of g okay so you, so the point is that uh, if i plug in uh, the problem is that if i plug in a point of uh, projective space into a homogeneous polynomial then if i change the representation of the point then a scalar will come out and uh, it will come out with the power which is equal to degree of the polynomial but if i take such quotients then these these powers will cancel okay therefore you get a well defined function so all this is telling you is that uh, you know uh, homogeneous polynomials are not enough to define functions but quotients of homogeneous polynomials of the same degree certainly define functions on uh, appropriate uh, subsets of projective space of course appropriate subject uh, subsets I should uh, by, by that I mean uh, I the denominator polynomial should not vanish okay for me uh, to be able to evaluate f by g at a point okay. So now the now this is the prototype of uh, what a regular function is for a subset of projective space so uh, so we make this definition that uh, so here is a definition uh, a function uh, h from uh, x to k uh, where uh, x uh, uh, is a is a variety is a is a quasi projective or projective variety uh, is defined uh, is is said to be regular at x in x if it locally looks like a quotient of two homogeneous polynomials uh, and the number of variables is equal to uh, one more than the dimension of the projective space in which x sits okay. So uh, uh, if uh, x belongs to z of g uh, where x is subset of pn and uh, h restricted to uh, ux uh, is equal to uh, f by g uh, restricted to ux where uh, ux is an open neighborhood of x uh, contained in in z uh, uh, oops h x should not be in z g in fact I do not want I want to divide by g and I want to evaluate it at x so g should not vanish at x so so this has to be corrected x should not be in the 0 set of g and this neighborhood should be contained in the complement of this 0 set of g. Uh, the complement of so this is the this is the definition of what a, uh, a function uh, a regular function at a point means uh, of course here uh, here uh, uh, f and g are uh, in the homogeneous coordinate ring of the projective space okay which is uh, well polynomials in the right number of variables so this is going to be k of x naught okay so the idea is very simple uh, and of course you know 
uh, it's it's uh, regular at a point aut automatically means regular in a neighborhood of a point okay so uh, because you are requiring this not only at that point you are requir requiring it in a neighborhood of the point so the definition of regular function as in the affine case already says it is regular at a point if and only if it is already regular in a neighborhood of, a, of that point okay uh, so uh, now uh, now what we do is again define the ring of regular functions on the on the positive variety or quasi positive variety uh, we define uh, ox as before and uh, it becomes uh, k algebra okay so uh, regular functions uh, ox is of course the set of all global regular functions namely functions which are regular on the whole of x which are re that means functions are regular which are regular at every point okay and uh, if you take the set of all such functions that is a k algebra because sum of regular functions is regular product of regular functions is regular and uh, uh, the multi when you multiply a constant function constant with a regular function that is again regular because a constant is also thought of as a constant regular function okay. So uh, well so <coughs> so we have this uh, ring of regular functions on the on, on your uh, quasi projective or projective variety uh, and uh, the point I want to make is that as before every uh, regular function uh, uh, regular function is always continuous okay uh, regular functions elements <coughs> of ox are always continuous and uh, that is again something is continuous of course for the Zariski topology uh, uh, so elements uh, of ox are going to give uh, uh, morph the I, I have still not defined morphisms uh, so let me come to that later regular functions of ox are always continuous okay and the continuity is uh, uh, is obvious because of uh, it is obvious if you look at the if you remember the fact that the, the Zariski topology on the projective space is a quotient topology of the uh, topology above okay. So if you give me a regular function on a subset here okay then if you compose it with the projection okay you will get a regular function on the affine space okay above uh, on a subset of the suitable subset of the affine space above and that is continuous and that will tell you that uh, the inverse image of closed sets are closed because of the definition of the quotient topology and therefore what will happen is that uh, regular functions are uh, it is very trivial to see regular functions are continuous okay. Now uh, now that we have defined this what we can do next is uh, now this paves the way to be able to define uh, morphisms so uh, now how do we define morphisms between two varieties uh, is just a uh, this uh, definition is the same as before it is a morphism between two varieties is just a continuous map that pulls back regular functions to regular functions okay. So uh, definition remains the same only thing is now you have uh, uh, your objects are more you are not only considering affine or quasi affine varieties you are also considering projective or quasi projective varieties. So you can think of a morphism from an affine or a quasi affine or a projective or a quasi projective variety into another variety which is again one of the one of the one of these four types okay. So uh, the definition <coughs> of uh, a morphism is the same as before the definition of a morphism is the same as before and uh, and again what will what will happen is that uh, uh, we again get we again get the following important theorem if x is any variety and y an affine variety then the we have a natural have a natural bijection from the set of all morphisms of varieties from x to y to uh, to the set of all homomorphisms of k algebras from a y 
to O x. Uh, we saw this. Uh, we saw this theorem uh, where we thought, where we were thinking of x only as uh, an affine or quasi-affine variety, but then the same theorem will, uh, the proof will go through. Now, if you go back and look at this proof, you will see that the same proof will work even if x is uh, a projective or a quasi-projective variety. Okay, so this theorem still holds. The theorem still holds. And uh, if you remember. I think I call this map as alpha and uh, what was this map uh, well if you give me morphism from x to y uh, then it goes to alpha f which is just the pullback of regular functions uh, it will it, it, it is a map from a y to o x uh, which will which will pull back uh, a regular function phi to uh, uh, you give me a regular function on you will give me a regular function phi on y uh, then if you compose it with f you will get a regular function on f on, on x. So uh, first apply f then apply phi okay this is just the pullback this is just the pullback of regular functions and you must remember that a y is the same as o y a y and o y are the same because y is an affine variety okay. So uh, the affine coordinate ring is is the same as the uh, global regular functions okay and so this is the this is the map we defined and then you also have the inverse map which goes in this direction and what is the inverse map if you start with phi <coughs> yeah uh, k algebra home of some from a y to o x then what you do is that uh, you recall that uh, 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 y is uh, an affine variety, so y sits inside some a n. So, so a uh, so which it so it means uh, the uh, the uh, the affine coordinate ring of y is just the affine coordinate ring of a n uh, modulo the ideal of y. Uh, this is how you define the affine coordinate ring of a affine variety, and then. <coughs> uh, and this is well uh, this is this is going to be identified with k x1 etc uh, up to x uh, uh, or let me put k y1 uh, or maybe t1 t1 etc up to tn uh, tn modulo uh, iy and <coughs> uh, and so you are you have the t i bars here which are regular functions they are the they are just the globe they are just the coordinate functions on the affine space in which y sits okay and you are just a t i bar means just uh, it can also be thought of just as t i restricted to y okay because after all taking this quotient amounts to restricting polynomial functions to closed subset y okay. So <coughs> now each each t i bar will go to a certain uh, regular function in x and use this bunch of n regular functions in x to define a morphism from x to uh, a fine space and uh, show that that morphism actually uh, that map is actually a morphism which factors through y and for which the alpha is phi. So you know uh, so the diagram is that from y what you do is you you get a map into a n and uh, this is given by uh, uh, so here is g and g is g of uh, uh, y is just uh, phi of t1 bar of y dot 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 phi of <coughs> tn bar of y this is n triple so and and the fact is that this factors through uh, uh, so I would rather call uh, this map as g uh, this as g tilde if you want and it factors through x uh, oops uh, my uh, this should have been x sorry. so this should have been x so these these all should have been sm small x's. So this map is from x to a n 
and it fact factors through y and uh, through a morphism like this and and phi is actually phi uh, so let me write that below <coughs> alpha the alpha of this g is actually phi okay <coughs> so this is the inverse map this is alpha inverse this is how we got this bijective uh, correspondence you can check that uh, the whole proof goes through if you allow x also to be a quasi uh, projective or a projective variety there is no difference okay the proof uh, uh, does not uh, uh, I mean really the, the proof really did not depend on the fact that x was affine or quasi affine okay. So you can check this theorem so in particular you know if I take y equal to a1 it will tell you that the morphisms from x to a1 are the same as the regular functions on x okay. So, so just as in the affine case the regular functions are the same as morphisms into a1 there is there is no difference okay there is really do no difference. So the same uh, proof works and uh, uh, the point I want to make is uh, 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 here is a here is a uh, very important theorem uh, which is uh, which I would like to say in, in, in this connection. Uh, see we saw that if uh, 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 if you put if you put y to be a 1 you will get uh, regular functions okay uh, 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 but but more importantly we saw that you know uh, the uh, if you take any affine variety which is different from a point okay uh, the fact that it is different from a point means that its ideal is different from a maximal ideal and therefore when you take its affine coordinate ring it will have lots of polynomial functions okay. So it is going to be polynomial ring modulo some ideal which is a prime ideal but it is not a maximal ideal okay uh, this is a finitely generated k algebra which is an integral domain and uh, this has lots of uh, polynomial functions. So if you give me a affine variety which is different from a point there are a lot of uh, global regular functions which are given by a lot of polynomials okay whereas this is not the case for a projective variety okay. Uh, so the theorem is that if, if x is a projective variety then O of x is isomorphic to k o of x is just k okay. So uh, uh, maybe I will uh, uh, let me put isomorphic okay. where by isomorphism I mean uh, so what I mean by this is that every global regular function is the function that corresponds to a constant it is a constant function and there are the only global regular functions are constant. So you must think of this as an analog of the fact that you know uh, if you have a compact uh, complex manifold then the only global holomorphic functions on that will be constant and that is just because of Liouville's theorem okay that a bounded entire function is a constant. So, so it somehow you must think uh, of x as being compact and therefore it does not admit any global functions which are not constant okay. But the proof of this will require some more definition so I will defer that okay but what you must understand is that uh, if your variety is a projective variety then it has no global regular functions which are no non constant global regular functions of course constant functions are always there but if you want to if you want non constant regular functions there are there are none okay. This makes life a little bad in the following sense because you know you can we have we have seen that if if you have two affine varieties uh, then they are isomorphic if and only if their affine coordinate rings are isomorphic and you know for an affine variety the affine coordinate ring is the same as the ring of regular functions okay so an affine variety can be kept track of by looking at its affine coordinate ring and the affine coordinate ring does not change uh, uh, no matter in which projective space you are embedding the affine variety as a closed subset of okay but this is not going to have uh, 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 so so let me repeat that uh, the uh, if you take an affine variety if you take its uh, affine coordinate ring that is the same as its ring of regular functions 
that ring is independent of the embedding of this affine variety as a close irreducible closed subset of some affine space. If you change the affine space and you embed the same affine variety into into some other affine space as an irreducible closed subset then if you compute the affine coordinate ring there you will still get an isomorphic, isomorphic ring okay. So you can keep track of a you can keep track of an affine variety by looking at its ring of functions that is what it says the ring of functions completely controls and keeps track of the affine variety but this is not true for projective variety because for a projective variety you take two different projective varieties they uh, unfortunately uh, uh, the ring of regular functions is just k it is just a constant. So there is no way to uh, it, it becomes hard for you to distinguish between two projective varieties okay then of course uh, so this leads to other problems uh, and in fact uh, this is what leads you to study uh, 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 so in fact this should tell you you should expect that if you take a projective variety uh, and try to define the coordinate ring of a projective variety which is you know analogous to what you would do for an affine variety namely take the homogeneous coordinate ring of the ambient projective space uh, if you have a projective variety embedded in an ambient projective space what you do is you take the homogeneous coordinate ring of the ambient projective space and go modulo the ideal of this projective variety and the result is again a graded ring because you are taking a graded ring okay and you are going modulo an ideal which is a homogeneous ideal it is a homogeneous prime ideal. So you again get a graded ring which is an integral domain which is a finitely generated k algebra but the problem is that if you change this embedding you take the same projective variety and put it into some other projective space and calculate uh, again look at the uh, coordinate ring the homogeneous coordinate ring it will change it could change and it will so it is very uh, so the way in which a projective variety is embedded in projective space is, is uh, has a uh, is it does not have a uniformity about it okay and this tells you that you know uh, it gives you the following uh, fact I mean this it gives you the following philosophy which is the basis of all higher study about projective space it is the fact that if you want to study all the functions uh, if you want to study the geometry of a projective space uh, you want to study geometry of a projective variety you must look at its embeddings in various projective spaces that should reveal its geometry okay. The way it is uh, the way uh, it is uh, uh, it is homogeneous coordinate ring changes as you embed it in various projective spaces okay that should give you uh, some grasp about the geometry of the project of the other projective variety. So it is uh, uh, but nevertheless this does not mean that there are not that there, that there are uh, that you do not have properties of projective variety which are intrinsic to it as a variety okay. So what it tells you is that uh, you can no longer work with uh, 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 global regular functions on it because there are not any non constant global regular functions. So I will come to the proof of this later but then I want to tell you only one thing if you look up put it, put these two together uh, as a corollary you will get uh, the only uh, uh, the only uh, morphisms from the projective variety to an affine variety. are the constants are the constant maps. So this is something that you can see immediately because you know in this bijection suppose x is a projective variety if x is a projective variety then uh, ox will become k okay and therefore I will get uh, morphisms from x to y in bijection with homomorphisms of k algebras from ay to k okay but every k algebra homomorphism from ay to k is surjective because it is a k algebra homomorphism the image has to contain k. So every k algebra homomorphism from ay to k will be surjective which means its kernel will be a maximal ideal and therefore the, uh, the, the, the set of morphisms from x to y okay will be the same will be in one to one correspondence with the maximal ideals of a y but the maximal ideals of a y correspond to points of y and therefore what will happen is that 
uh, what this will translate to if you look at it uh, it will be that uh, the only morphism from a from a projective variety to an affine variety will be at the constant map that ends whose image is a single point and how many points how many such morphisms will you have as many morphisms as there are points in the target variety okay and each point in the target variety which is an affine variety corresponds to a maximal ideal of ay mod which you get a home morphism from ay to k that is what this bijection says. So uh, as a corollary uh, what you get is that the only morphisms from a projective variety to an affine variety are the constant maps okay there are no non constant uh, uh, morphisms there are no morphisms mm, except constant maps okay and uh, and of course this also should tell you uh, another corollary that you can uh, get is that uh, if a variety is both affine and projective and projective then it is a point okay this is also something that you can uh, uh, that you can easily realize because you know uh, if the variety is uh, projective then its global regular functions are just constants and if it is an affine variety then you know the, the ring of regular functions is uh, 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 will now be cons just the constants and for what affine varieties will the ring of regular functions be constants only single singletons which consists of points. So uh, if you put the condition affine and projective on a variety then you are reducing it to a point okay. So, uh, so these are two easy corollaries of this theorem and this these two theorems okay. So I will stop here and uh, continue in the next lecture.